that music. <laughs> For a minute at a time With John and Will And I guess you just rhyme It's Bad Minutes! Hello, and welcome to another week of Bat Minutes Forever The podcast where we peruse every Music video inflected moment of uh, Joel Schumacher's 1995 Batman film, Batman Forever, one minute at a time. I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. And here to deliver my sermon, it is I, John Parker. I was going to say a funeral speech thing, but that, that <laughs> makes the movie sound bad. I don't want it to come across that way. Oh, man. I have so much to say about this priest, actually, too, because, like... <laughs> Yeah, you know, growing up, growing up Catholic, when you just seeing this guy was like, well, is, even if it, it, is he a priest? We'll get into all that in a minute. <laughs> but anyway, we're joined here uh, this week by two guests from the previous seasons, uh, people who will not be strangers to anyone who knows the the DC Cinematic Universe. That's for sure. Uh, we have Mark and Nathan, hosts of DC Cinematic Minute. Hello, howdy. thanks for having hey. us on. Howdy, 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 duty. <laughs> we called in the experts. Oh, that's a. You know, thanks for coming back, guys. I got one thing I didn't mean to ask you, fellas, now, because, like, you obviously be gearing up to do, do cover Wonder Woman and whatnot, like, this, your upcoming season. But then, like, because DC movies are all sort of, like, in all over the place now, like, what are you obligated to cover anymore? Like, are you kind of like, we won't be doing Joker, but you will be doing Birds of Prey? Oh, yeah. Or are you doing, like, no, whatever oh, they release? Like, that's what you got to do. Oh, my God. You're, that's like, okay. <laughs> so you're, you're looking way... I don't even know how you're seeing that far ahead, my guy. <laughs> you're worried uh, now. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got me shaking in my boots. Um, didn't even think about that, to be honest with you. Uh, we've just kind of playing it by ear, I think. We've been tackling Wonder Woman, um, which was one thing when we first set out, uh, when we first started with uh, Man of Steel. Um, Wonder Woman, I think, had or was it like about to come out I think at that point and we were just really gung-ho about there so like I think <laughs> at the point that was our stopping point <laughs> and now it's moved drastically so we were, yeah 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 so now we're just like okay um we're gonna keep going <laughs> question mark um so yeah maybe yeah you gotta, you gotta bring up Zack Snyder and just go like can you clarify whether this Snyder cut actually exists so we know what what which version of Justice League <laughs> we have to cover down the line do yeah, both that's 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 the tip the, the ticking time clock we need his answer before we actually get to that movie so <laughs> and, uh, hopefully as of recording I finally got around to watching Justice League and as I said to Niall I kind of liked it as it was I had it was fine. I, I had fun. You had fun, yeah. right? That was uh, you had fun. That was the key takeaway. Yeah, it was good. It, I've seen much worse movies. It is. It, it's it's mm -hmm. essentially works if like you if you take it like this is like the pilot for a, a Justice League cartoon. Like keeping in mind like the pilot the pilot of, of the show is usually like one of the worst episodes. But it's because yeah. I've not I've not got everything down just yet. But it's like, it's, yeah. you know, it can start off strong and you'd be like, oh, I'd watch more of that. So that's why the way I mm -hmm. took Justice League, it's like, yeah, it's like a big pilot cartoon where it's like, they'll, they'll, they'll smooth this out. You know, they'll, they'll get it working once it gets, you know, into further movies and stuff. But mm. yeah. What is it? Yeah, it's a, it's like a step in like, I don't know. It's, it, the final product is like good. If, and then like when you start, for like some people you start poking holes in it like a certain other <laughs> film that's out right now and then you're like and then you're like oh ooh, uh, and then you go oh i shouldn't think that <laughs> yeah. way I may mean, i just leave it be <laughs> but uh, anyway one film that is infallible and uh we cannot have any holes poked in it whatsoever no. is batman forever uh and we're here to talk about minute 46 today minute 46 begins with Oh, a shadowy figure slinking back into the shadows. A familiar shadowy figure, not just to us, but to you two fellas as well, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and it ends a minute later with uh, Bruce Wayne still sort of mid uh, mid doze, basically, in a you know in the the mists of uh, of recollection. Yeah, we we covered it mostly like in the the last week, but obviously when you guys were on for season one, you were covering the the Wayne death deaths or the deaths of the Waynes. I should have been pluralizing all over the place there. <laughs> 
But and then like so now you're almost literally getting like well what would have happened immediately after that <laughs> like, yeah because yeah. you get here yeah the, uh, the the figure of the shooter uh, who we all know is Jack Napier yeah as I said last minute this would have been the perfect chance to connect the series make that Napier well it's one of those things it's like because I've got it framed identically to the way he was like when Hugo Blick played him Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's like so they're kind of going like oh this is the same it's the same thing Uh, but it's like I do think it might be a legal thing because I know Jack Nicholson made money off this anyway because he made money off all the Batman sequels but what what I understand is that he had something in his contract where to this day if you instigate Jack Napier because that's Jack Napier the concept of that being the origin of the Joker that originates with Jack Nicholson yeah and he's part of his crazy contract that he got where he made all the money in the world from Batman is that if you use Jack Napier as the origin story of the Joker again you have to pay him for that and so it's basically it's basically like they might have been in the credits they never refer they, they could have put Jack Napier but they put down Shooter and I think it might be because like we don't want to pay Jack Nicholson any more money because like, <laughs> yeah. if we say that it's him, if we say that's Jack Napier, they're gonna be like, he's gonna be coming in, rubbing his fingers, going, "Come on, cough it up, buddy." <laughs> yeah, I'm off filming the crossing guard, and I want to buy a snooker table for my for my office or something. Yeah. Plus, I mean, you that's you crazy. could argue as well. It does sort of work thematically and in the way this is shot because it's a memory. Mm. It's hazy anywhere. You know, it's like how a child might think about something. He did, he's kind of not taking the face in. That's not important. So I'll, I'll, I'll cut it some slack. Mm. It's getting much more... I think we kind of you know, talked about it last week, but it is much more like... Um, considering, you know, Tim Burton did the original version, this is much more artistic and mm. sort of uh, expressionistic in its uh, presentation of events. Like, much more like it's... The, the memory is getting further away and so certain things aren't remembered quite the same, and they're getting a little more exaggerated in other things. So, like, yeah. whereas before he could remember exactly what Jack Napier looked like, now he's looking at him like he's just, like, oh, this shadowy figure that was in the, the shadows, and, like, everything's all covered in mists and stuff, because it's, mm-hmm. you know, the, 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 the figures are still strong in his mind, but it's all kind of fading away a little bit as well. Yeah, and that's how a child would sort of view him. The, mm. Children can't sort of process these things properly. He is this scary, looming figure, if you're looking at it through the kid Bruce's eyes. I think the main thing that's like because the the frame the shot then of the parents lying on the on the ground in the middle of like this kind of spotlight that's uh, you know illuminating the bodies and stuff exactly the same way that Dick Grayson's parents and brother mm. uh, were lying in the middle of the circus ring. So I think maybe that's you know obviously brought up memories for Bruce and you know because it's having the close ups of, of his eyes, which were indicated back when he saw the Wayne's or the Graysons dying. So now you're kind of like, well, from this perspective, Bruce can't be remembering what it looked like, you know, seven feet away from his own body up in the sky <laughs> looking down. Maybe he left his body. Yeah. So it was like it was all transcended into Batman in that moment. That's just so, it's so odd the way they've done it, too, because I don't think that's like lighting. I think it's like they literally painted a white circle to look like a, like a, a spotlight and then put the, the bodies in the middle of it. Because like, the bodies don't seem to be lit up. It's just that spot in the street. Um, which is, you know, again, as I was kind of alluding to at the start of the minute, it's like it's all very music video y, this whole thing. It just seems so much more like this could go in, if this started going into like Total Eclipse of the Heart or something <laughs> throughout the rest of the minute, I wouldn't be surprised. It's kind of got that that sort of 1980s music video vibe to it in a, in a bizarre way. For some reason, it also kind of reminded me of, uh, especially with the, the, um, the funeral guests that are there, the silhouettes. I was like, "Is this smooth criminal?" <laughs> like, you know how like everyone's like a silhouette in that music video. I, I can bring up that music video, right? Yes. <laughs> you're allowed to still. Um, I think maybe <laughs> it's it's that's your call, buddy. Um, it's uh the it it is very um music video esque. Mm. Um, but I do like the idea of it of of the memory getting further away. But I have a question. If we're supposed to, is are we like on the? Uh, is this supposed to be the same Batman and everything as eighty uh, nine and like every everything as as all of it? We've been sort of going throughout the season under the impression that like yeah, it's supposed to be the same, it the is? same exact guy. Yeah. Okay. So if this memory is getting further away, but he already confronted 
Jack Napier in the first movie and everything like that. Mm. I mean, like, wouldn't he be? Wouldn't the memory switch to be like, oh yeah, that's you know, yeah, it's yeah. uh, Jack Jack Napier. And then now, now it gets to a point where it's like you know, uh, photorealism versus you know what was on paper. So maybe on paper it was supposed to be Jack Napier, but then again they were like, hey, we can't <laughs> afford Jack to pay Jack Nicholson. So yeah, that's a good point. But then now it just seems like it's just like a little. I like it better uh, that the focus is more on the ground shot with the spotlight than the smoked figure. Um, I think the point of it being just a smoked figure is just that. It's like, oh, yeah, that was just the gunman. Yeah, you know? yeah no yeah. matter who it was. I'm, I'm not, I, I'm, yeah, I've never really been a big fan of the whole confrontation of Joe Chill or even, uh, you know, the Jack Napier thing in, in 89. I, it works. You know, it's fun. It's fine. It's just a different thing. But... I kind of always assumed that it was just, you know, a shadowy figure never found out. And, you know, the guy, the kid went crazy and started dressing up like a bat. Yeah, because I think if he solves it, you know, if he takes Napier down, which he does, yeah. that kind of completes the circle, which sort of, what, yeah. where does he go from there? <laughs> well, I think that's the thing that adds into this being a continuation from 89, because they kind of address that later in the movie, then when, like, yeah. Dick Grayson's uh, con- t- constantly talking about, like, wanting to kill Two Face, and then Batman or Bruce is just saying to him, like, well, you can go and kill him, but it won't make it any better. You'll just go out looking for another face to, to, to beat up and another one to take your, revenge- your revenge out on. Yeah. Okay. So they, okay. So they're kind of like. They did. Okay. <laughs> but those, those, I only heard this week, and it's from. Um, <clears throat> I think it was like Kevin Smith was talking about it, but he said he heard from some guy he knows like working within the industry about the original ending for Joker, like the Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Oh, and I was just like, he was, he was like, oh my god, you know, Kevin Smith's impressed by everything because he, everything he talks about, he's always like, oh, this is the greatest yeah. thing ever, and stuff. And he was like, oh, this was a bit amazing. <laughs> I cried. And you're like, I, I don't know, like, you know, come on. <laughs> but I like the ending we got. Like, I can't imagine how it'd be better. Well, he's, uh, I don't, I, uh, actually, I yeah, kind of, I. Maybe I would have preferred it actually, because Ooh. it would have been like, yeah, just you know, completely separating universes and stuff. But I think he said like he heard from someone that the original ending was, you know, to have uh, Arthur Fleck sitting in that. Oh, spoilers for the end of Joker, by the way, if anyone hasn't seen it. But like <laughs> Arthur Fleck would be sitting smoking in the, the psychiatrist's office, and then when he's laughing, she'll go like, "Well, what are you laughing at?" And he's like, "Oh, it was just something funny. You wouldn't get it." And then it would cut back to the the night of the riot, and then when the Waynes are getting murdered. Uh, the, the gunman would take off his mask and it would be Arthur Fleck. And it would be like, oh, yeah, just like in 89. Uh. And then he'd go to walk away with Bruce standing there. And he turns around, raises the gun again and shoots Bruce Wayne. Oh. And then cut the no. credits. That was supposed to be like the original ending for the Joker that they obviously. But the thing is, like, I kind of would have accepted it because it so doesn't feel like Arthur Fleck actually is the Joker. He's That's just true. some variation of the of the character. Doing that would have been like, yeah, this is a, it's just a completely different Elseworlds thing where like there was never a Batman. The Arthur, the, the Joker reigned mm. supreme, I guess, in the end. And yeah, I suppose I don't him. get the vibe, even though they allude to it, uh, that Batman exists in that world mm. or will exist. Well, I, I would have been fascinated to see like where they would have gone with like Thomas Wayne being like such an asshole in that movie, <laughs> and, like uh, you know, particularly if you're supposed to be Batman hero of of the people. When you know, riot by the the lower classes essentially killed your parents. Would mm. bat would this version of Batman grow up to resent them in some way? Would he be like a like you know like a, an even darker like would you know would it be a Batman who was like evil in some way? Like what what what? I guess that that would that would end up being Todd Phillips saying, "What are my what's my take on that?" Yeah. And then we would, as an audience, would have to accept it because if you kill off. Bruce Wayne right then and there, then that's kind of like Todd Phillips saying, well, that's because the Joker is, or Joker is like the hero of this city. Like he is like, because if, if the Waynes and, and they're all like built on this foundation of the rich parasiting off like mm. everyone and like we get rid of them and we start this whole revolt and this is like, this is just how it is, like an infection fighting itself or something. And then you're saying the Joker is like the the one to the the hero or whatever or like some sort of validation for Joker. Um, then that's his view saying mm-hmm. that um, I don't agree with it, but like then he would I don't know if if he ends up putting 
I don't know if there's a Joker sequel or they put Batman in there somewhere. Uh, they do a Batman film with within that Joker universe. Then th- there's another chance that Todd Phillips says, "Well, here's how my here's how my society creates this type of Batman who might kill without having mm-hmm. some sort of redemption. It's just the way he is, like the Batman mm-hmm. or something." Um, I don't know. It it all comes down to. And especially like my takeaway for Joker was this is the filmmaker making uh, like a political statement of how they feel. And and not not that I agree with it at all, but I don't know. I'm okay with the ending we got, I think. And I've always liked that concept of, okay, maybe Joker had a hand in in creating all that crime in Gotham or whatever. Or, but I like that idea that. Um, and they talk about in uh, Dawn of Justice, but it's like that it doesn't have to make sense. You don't have to know who your killer is. It doesn't matter. Like you don't like in, in this minute, you don't have to show the silhouette of who the killer was or who th- the face of that killer. Mm. It doesn't matter. What matters is that someone random just killed your parents for almost I think no that's reason. Worse, in a way. And yeah, yeah. I think so, that would traumatize him more because it's something he can never sort of solve yeah you can't solve which it does doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which it does uh-huh. that, the, look bottom line the dude is crazy yeah i mean and yeah no matter what uh intentional unintentional joe chill jack napier uh arthur fleck doesn't matter if you watch your parents die in a gutter for apparently in your eight-year-old mind no reason at mm-hmm. all the entire world is not going to make sense. Yes. Yeah. No matter how hard you try, and that's why you do have to force it to make sense, and that's where logic comes into it, and then you have to build on knowledge, mm. which is what the character is. So it's like a crazy person <laughs> just hitting the books. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, oh, that's perfectly, yeah. perfectly put. And I think that's why I prefer it this way. I, I mean, I do like the twists where, oh, in 89, it's Jack Napier, you know. But I do much prefer it this way. It's it's scarier, really, the future mm. of Batman. Like, what's going to happen <laughs> to this guy? He's already off the rails, really. Well, maybe they, they've just been too subtle with it. And I'm, like, I want to say, like, maybe I'm reading too much into this. Or maybe it's like, no, this was intentional, and we're just trying to be shockingly for this movie. Although maybe not as shockingly for this movie, because we've, co- we've come out with a couple of things. Like, oh, this was quite a subtle thing they did. But we kept joking about it, because like, the rest of it's so over-the-top and garish. <laughs> just like, oh, as if this movie would have any kind of deft hand in uh, portraying something in scenery and setting. But the actual shot then of the you know the, the the white circle on the floor, when Bruce kind of standing between the two parents and the way the shadows are falling, mm-hmm. it almost looks like that's supposed to be the bat symbol, like in a weird way. It's like the two bodies are the wings, even the way their legs yeah. are, like the kind of little indentations at the bottom of the wings. Mm. Then like the, the looming shadow of Bruce behind him is the you know the bat tail, I guess. He's obviously the head. They're both their heads are the tips of the the wings and stuff. And then the circle around them is supposed to be like, well, that's the signal and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And like I thought, like, oh, that would have been, like, oh, that would have been, they had emphasized that more. That would have been cool. But then I might have thought it was a bit stupid and over the top if they had emphasized it more. But like as it is, it's like, no, it's quite a, if, if that's what they're going for, it's a cool little I mean, subtle uh, little reference. And I know that that type of thing was done in the Arkham Asylum game where you have the flashback to Wayne's death, but they didn't do it that overtly. They had literally like, him leaning over the bodies and then within the, the span of one of the wings, the bat symbol emerged and stuff. But they didn't fl- that have it like as the, the, the bodies themselves are literally making up the, uh, you know, the, the symbol that we know. Yeah, I think someone did that as a comic book cover too, yeah. not too long ago. I'm trying I to remember who it like, was. I feel like that was. Um, it was yeah. like when you turn upside down and it's like Batman as the shadow standing over. I don't know, but then you flip it, right side up. It's like Bruce Wayne as a kid dead parents mm-hmm. but it's like you flipped it upside down and the image is it's still symbol. it's like batman yeah. it's i for, someone did it. it was it was i don't know it was important back then but kind of, if I, lost did my year, mind year one do something like that <laughs> maybe like one of the covers of when that was out as like individual issues rather than a collective oh, uh, oh I don't, i've only got it as the trade but yeah, yeah i just thought that like you know if that was the thing that joel schumacher was doing it's like yeah it's pretty that's pretty pretty well done although again the, the painted circle thing just reminds me of um, you, you know the, the name of that. We call that band John who did the Soft Cell, who did Fascination, or am I thinking of Ultravox? Ultravox. Was it, 
You know, they keep feeling fascination. Yeah. Fashion. Oh, um. um Love someone. Who does it? You think I would bloody know this? God, this is my fault. The huge thing they did, I was working in a matrix in a cocktail. But... Yeah. But it's. Um, oh, um, oh, that's like. Alphabet. Um, I've had to look. I've had to look up this band every time I want to hear that song. <laughs> and I go, who? And like I'll be, oh yeah, I won't forget it, and then I'll forget the band. It's, it's like the Human Beans or Human League. Human that was it. Human, human League. League. Human League. Human League. Right. Like, I, I actually that. have that, and I still didn't remember. I've got the record downstairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just to edit this whole thing so that we go, and it's of course, Human League. yes. <laughs> and we're like, yes, yeah, absolutely. But I remember the video of that song has a whole thing where it comes down from the sky into Earth, and it's like it's a map, but it's got like a a big red, like orange dot. And the closer you get in, there's like they've painted the entire street to be the dot. Yes. So it's like someone spent a lot of money in derelict streets painting every goddamn house to be that <laughs> color within a giant dot radius. <laughs> and for some reason, yeah, it just reminded me when I saw it, like, oh, it's a big painted dot on the floor with the gut. <laughs> and they also do, they've had the added attention of putting in the popcorn box for Bruce as well, which looks to be the same as it was in 89. Yeah. And uh, I think he's wearing, looks like he's wearing his cap too. Unless that kid just has a... An elongated floppy fringe. Well, but- speaking of this kid, right, I, I, I'm in the middle on this, right? He's really well cast. He looks like a young Val. Mm. But at the same time, like, why has this child kept the whole look and hairstyle for this, these years? Like, this is, he's dressed like Val. Uh, I don't know. You know, some rich dudes probably don't ever change their hairstyle. <laughs> True. I suppose he's in a state of arrested development almost. Yeah, you could you could say it's it's that way. I, was, I would just imagine, like, oh, you know, Bruce Wayne got, he's not thinking about this stuff. He's got, He's not got time to worry about his hairstyle. Like he's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I established yeah. this when I was six, and this is my hairstyle for the rest of my life. It's all he knows. I always thought it was very distracting in like the early days in Batman Begins when you had floppy haired Christian Bale, <laughs> like <laughs> to do the flashback to him going to the Joe Chills yeah. trial and stuff, and he's like, oh, he's wearing the jumper. And he's got the floppy fringe. <laughs> he just looks because it's Christian Bale. He just kind of looks a bit like he's really buff, but it just looks kind of dorky. I'm like, <laughs> oh, get that hair slick back, dude. Like I just like I know you win your Patrick Bateman form at this point, and then <laughs> hey. you'll slick back the hair for Bruce Wayne anyway. Just have it the whole way through. Like, uh, no, you need the transformation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Then of course, uh, we get all these shots of um, everything in this cold blue kind of light. Uh, particularly the the ro- the roaring fire behind. I think it's a reverend. I was a priest earlier, but I'm pretty sure he's got a reverend's collar. I wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> what's the What's the difference? A priest collar, reverend's collar. Father Maori, get in here. <laughs> yeah, we need get to get him on the line. Oh, quick! Oh, it's just the priest's Catholic, reverend's Protestant. That's that's basically your. But what's the difference in attire, though? Because. <laughs> <laughs> he's like hey which one do we need for this situation? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's important I, I genuinely don't know having no connection to either of these things I don't, mm-hmm. does a does a protestant have a different outfit they don't have the collar yeah, thing like, do they it's exactly the same thing what only the white the white collar goes all the way around instead of where a catholic priest has it like just a little white square just, this, oh, just the square okay. under the now who which church has a pocket square for these uh for these guys is that what i'm looking at <laughs> that's the uh church of uh, latter day bats the uh... church of latter day one percent apparently <laughs> which <laughs> which one do we contact for the blue fireplace no, that though? thing is, is that like that fire is that a premium that fire is too big <laughs> uh, it is big that's isn't too, it too big isn't of it a fire a giant isn't he too close yeah. to that? He'd be like, like hey, sweating father, through, like, please, <laughs> don't sweat yeah. dripping off his nose. Like, it's worrying, like, whoa, isn't it? Like, no. Father, if you don't move, you're next. <laughs> so please step forward. No fire it. should be that big, really. <laughs> Although once we were at, remember, Niall, we were at Gary Gavigan, former guest of the show. We were at his house, and he ha- we were playing Mario Kart, and he put the fireplace on. And I swear to God, it, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> it, not only was it nearly this big it was scalding hot and he couldn't there was nothing you could do you just had to sit there sweating to death yeah well it was also the tension of you know playing mario kart because it's like it's it ain't no game john like it's, the heat was on I, and i think he put that fire on to distract us oh yeah yeah he's he i've seen him practicing like he just sits on the furnace <laughs> just playing mario kart so he can train his body to to be able to do infallible uh Clever. one 
first place scores every every time <laughs> under whatever condition. He'll sit in the furnace for an hour, then he goes out and he sits in the freezer for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so this priest is training for his Mario Kart tournament. <laughs> yeah. Although the thing is, because I would be like, if I was down in front of that fire, I'd be like, Jesus, I need to get out of here. But he, much much like, a, maybe that's why I mistook him for a Catholic priest. It's like, because he's so droning and boring in his delivery. <laughs> I guess, to be fair, it's like, it's a funeral. You're not going to be like, hey, guys, let's go and get these bodies in the ground. <laughs> but, like, it's, he just seems to be in a real, like, That's how I imagine they all are, to be honest. Wait, I just, I just realized something. Mm. It's, it, in this flashback, it's supposed to be 1940. Ah, yeah. Wait, that's that's <laughs> true. Look I, at these. Look at look at the clothes. I'm just now realizing the clothes yeah. on everybody. Well, it's one and, of those things, though, where you, at least in the Burton ones, you can never place the the era. Yeah, to the set. which mm. is yeah, which is one thing I really do very much enjoy about Gotham City and that aesthetic mm. is that it is always captured, you know, trapped in like the 20s to 40s era with you know dirigibles up in the air and spotlights mm. and things like that um uh you know with the with the weird long cars and whatnot but um i don't know i feel i just got thrown for a loop guys on this uh <laughs> on the on these the what particularly the character on the oh, so, sorry i'm on the three characters in the silhouette mm. uh wait like 18 seconds in and there's a woman that's on the far left that has just like i thought it was um at first, I thought it was like a court gesture or something like that, like oh, like, yeah. a, like like a just like an old, yeah, something something. And then I was like, oh no, that's like a tilted hat and like a like a like a like a mink shoulder thing. Mm. I don't know what they're called. Anyway, like a stole. Is yeah, that, yeah. Is that what they're called? I think so. That's what I call it. I would call it a stole, but. Although then the person on the other end looks like they'd be on the right hand looks like they could be wearing like a Kangol cap <laughs> like back yeah it's like, like Samuel, Samuel Jackson was at the uh, yeah was oh the yeah it's, it's, or, it's or Tarantino yeah. when he went through that phase of trying to be Samuel L Jackson yeah that must have been so awkward because yeah. like Samuel L just be like Quentin dude stop yeah. trying to steal my style <laughs> like well, yeah you who don't do you think, think I see what you're doing who do you think got the Kangol hat first he started doing an accent. Sometimes in mm. interviews, and it's like, oh no, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, promoting Kill Bill, he was constantly wearing the yellow jumpsuit and stuff. <laughs> started dressing like a cowboy when Hateful Eight came out. Uh, I would I would get behind this. If filmmakers just started dressing like their lead characters in every interview, I would be on board. Uh, what would we say? Like Val Kilmer coming out dressed up as Batman, but like, hey, it didn't work for Sean Young. People still think she was nuts for uh, coming out dressed up as Catwoman in that one talk show. So. True, true. <laughs> But um, also, we would be remiss. If we're talking about the you know the freaking the Nolan movies. There, that big blue fire can't help but be reminded of the very beginning of the Dark Knight, where you had like the, the, you know, you had your Warner Brothers symbol and whatnot, and then you just had a wall of blue flame and the, the symbol oh, yeah. coming out of it and stuff. I guess it's like the the reason it's blue is like well, you know, it's a sad memory. Blue is a kind of affiliated with, a, with being a sad color and, and and whatnot. But it's also that the blue blue flames are like the hottest. So it could be like this is still the internal rage within Bruce Wayne himself. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. And that's like, why it's yeah. so big, because it's building. It's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's never it's never waned. Hey. That, uh, <laughs> that, that flame of hatred. Yeah. Like, you know, just like, <laughs> and it's still all affiliated with the deaths and the, the funeral and whatnot. But the, although some of the – the way they've done it, I guess you just couldn't quite color correct it properly because – you see some of the candles then, they just got look like normal candles. Some of them are blue, some of them are not. <laughs> it's just like, ah, we just, you know, as long as we got the fireplace looking blue, that's all Joel cared about that day. Which, like, they, for production's sake, filmmaking, they were like, we need a, a blue fireplace. Like, that's a, that's a real blue fire, right? <laughs> or the, it's not color corrected, right? I don't no so it looks like hmm. i mean it looks like a like a gas fireplace thing because like at the bottom yeah. the bottom has like the uh like the starting flames mm. those are uh orange mm. whatever um yeah, but i don't actually. know i don't know how um uh, look i'm a dummy so i don't know if if there's like a chemical or if like propane or something you can you could turn it on to a certain setting and it just becomes blue <laughs> Yeah, because as as the tips go off and the, like it starts to get cold and it gains you know, oxygen as the flames, or whatever. yeah, yeah, it's uh it turns back into orange and red and all that. So I'm like, oh, so they got this giant blue fire fireplace. Mm. Like I think you can put like, in uh, like things like kind of colored 
turf and stuff. Yeah. Like colored coals that could change the colors. Like so if you wanted like a like a green fire. You just like, oh, just throw oh. this stuff in. And then You'd have so to maybe do that's, that. that is what they did. Yeah, but does, you'd have to do that because I've looked it up. Some titanium and a in blue there. Flame. To be that to be blue just naturally, it's got to be one thousand four hundred degrees Celsius. <laughs> which is two thousand six hundred degrees Fahrenheit. The thing is that that priest, he is the best Mario Kart player in yeah. the country. <laughs> like, <laughs> There's just no way he's standing there. <laughs> Everyone in that room would be dead. <laughs> I also tried looking up the priest. Not credited, this guy. There's oh! A whole, they've credited every single one of like... Yeah, I couldn't see it either, no. Yeah, he's just some guy. The thing is, he, as well as things I would have said, like, oh, he's got a speaking part, so they'd have to credit him, but... His mouth isn't really moving in sync with what he's saying. I think this is just like they got a guy to mouth something, and then maybe just some someone in like editing was just like, "All right, just say some boring." I've I've, I've tried to boost the audio and tried to get what he was saying in case it was like significant. In some mm-hmm. way. Yeah, same. Um, well, what what, yeah. what did you get, Mark? Like, what, what what did you manage to? It just sounded like it sounded. It almost kind of sounded like something you would actually hear from some sort of vigilante where it sounded almost like uh, an avenging type of mm. conversation. That's at least that's what I was getting out of it. I couldn't, I was like really trying to listen in, but it, it sounded like almost like an avengeful yeah. type of mantra. I think the lines I could pick up were like, uh, where there is evil, I give you love and where there is dot, dot, dot. And I was just like, I may bring hope. Where there are shadows, where mm-hmm. are, you know, I give you whatever. Where there are sinners, I give you whatever. Like you could make out all the words, but yeah, was, part of me was kind of hoping he was like there was sneaking a cheeky thing where he's going like in brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my like just mm-hmm. to see if they could like oh we're gonna tiny much. tiny little green lantern <laughs> have the green fire behind him as well. Oh, just to, the green fire that'd place. be awesome. Yeah. That, that's what they would do these days. <laughs> I was just like yeah, the, the priest at the. Bruce Wayne's parents' funeral was one of the Green Lantern Corps. Yep. And he's just like, yeah, just like, I just like hammering out that mantra. <laughs> and he <laughs> recruits <laughs> Bruce, and he is a Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> like, why not? Why not? Why not? I guess, dude, that would be a thing they would do in the comics. They'd be like, oh, by the way, did you know this? <laughs> like, I guess, yeah. Oh, he does He does have a yellow yeah, ring. Uh, at one point, he does get a yellow ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go, yellow fire, then. <laughs> um, a <laughs> uh, yellow, please, and the guy has to like, change oh, it again. It's like, oh, it's like I wait, can I mix two coals and make yellow? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I put the blue and green together, does it go back no, to it, yellow? It doesn't work like that. No, you can't. <laughs> it's now everything's just brown. It's just brown fire. I don't know what the hell happened. <laughs> I can't get a fix on this priest's hair. Um, <laughs> It's like a it's it's a one hundred percent comb over. Like oh, there's yeah. not even getting past it. Is that what I'm seeing? Like I I what I see that haircut and I automatically think Hitler personally. Like that's is that what <laughs> is that what you're seeing? You're getting you're getting Hitler vibe. It looks too. It it looks like it's too bald. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a receding hairline comb over, mm. which yeah, is really trying. Or or it's supposed to look like a proper barber cut like these hips hip kids are doing today or something i can't mm. oh like an undercut, yeah. like an undercut that's like i don't even know the receding hairline is throwing me hard guys yeah. and then like and then he starts <laughs> to comb over and it's just like what what it's do you say to be a comb over right Look, right the, the left side his right yeah I, that is very bold yeah i don't know because i'm thinking of like those kind of floppy hairstyles as well. I always think of uh, actually. Oh Chris... wait, I think it's a hat. Oh, I think what? he's wearing a hat. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know it. like a I'm... cardinal hat. I think it's, it's like a cardinal, like a, or some some sort of uh, Vatican esque oh. or something. Oh, I see it now. You've said, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's getting even even hotter in there now. It's like I can't, he can't even escape out of his head. He's like, no, I'm keeping it all trapped <laughs> in with a goddamn hat. Yeah, he... <laughs> it's a hat. <laughs> you're right, official. It's a hat. Okay. It's a hat. Oh, I still, I still just, I, all I can see is just like, no, it's full on Hitler cut. Like, it's just got okay. like. But you, yeah, you. <laughs> that's all I see. <laughs> it's all I, I don't see no hat. Yeah, I'm glad because it's like, I don't know what's happening at, on our far right side at like the tip. It looks like, um, just like hair strands. Like, it looks like. Right. I, I thought that, <laughs> but if you look, I think it's just a reflection from the fire, like bouncing off his yeah. bald head. 
Yeah. As, as a bald person, I know you can have a reflective head. It's <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just causing it to look like it's floppy hair, but it's actually just his head in a hat. Oh, actually, the more I look at him now, because I know we said we couldn't identify the actor, but he really reminds me of uh, Ian Abercrombie, the guy who played Mr. Pitt in Seinfeld, who was like Ooh. Elaine's boss, who actually dressed up as Hitler accidentally in that one episode. But, <laughs> accidentally. Uh, yeah, there's one where he's wearing, like, he's going out horse riding, and he's got, like, jodhpurs and, like, a brown jacket and stuff on. And I think well, like, there's a whole, you know, the way Seinfeld always plant things, and then they all pay, they pay off in a big way later on. Yeah. But I think Elaine's pen breaks or something, so his hands are covered in ink, and he kind of rubs it under his nose. And then he's just got, like, a little Hitler mustache. <laughs> and he's just going around, essentially just like Hitler the whole. But then Ian Abercrombie also played Alfred in the Birds of Prey TV show. So that could have been... Oh, little, yeah, although it's go. definitely not him because he would have been a big enough actor to be like I'm a freaking Zen <laughs> playing this oh, yeah. boiling yeah. to death priest in front of this giant fire you crazy <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm pretty sure 40 seconds in the priest is leaning as in like ooh I like get me yeah the fire is too high <laughs> <laughs> ooh, I thought it's this like, was like I'm a gonna say these things but I, <laughs> I'm gonna, like it's like leaning forward like boy I gotta get out of yeah. here um. But it, um, going back to uh, one more thing about the Joe Chill, Jack Napier killer thing going on um, is we, we talked about like, oh, why isn't Jack Napier and all that? But I guess if they were to ever use um, a face or anything, you'd have like that um, Joker in Suicide Squad type thing happen where it's like, oh, like now that people know that that's going to be in the film, that's all people are going to talk mm. about. So maybe it's best that it's just still a silhouette. Yeah. I don't know, that just came to my head. I'm surprised that, because, again, if money was no object to them, and Joel Schumacher did really want to, like, blend all these movies together, he could have done things like, oh, yeah, you could have Hugo Blake back playing the part, and then you could have even had, like, a flash of the Joker standing there just to be like, eh, remember? Remember that it was him and stuff? But I think it, it could be also interpreted in, like, oh, you know, it's, it's a faceless, you know, shooter and whatnot. Or it just could be that the fact that like what you know it's kind of tying into what Bruce says later on, like you know you can you can get your revenge on the person who wronged you, but then you'll just go out looking for someone else. So now yeah. it doesn't matter to him what the face was. It's just become Jack Napier has now just become the silhouette of criminality. So it doesn't matter. Like it's the the the, the personality he was looking to you know uh, you know get his revenge on has just been replaced by a faith a faceless a faceless sort of void of just like i just want to go after the void basically and yet like bruce didn't turn to like christianity instead of going crazy and dressing up in a bat like like it's right in front of him and like the guy is like preaching what you guys are saying apparently reflective of what he is you know experiencing and you know (laughs) You can write that any way. Have the priest preaching about, uh, you know, no revenge or, you know, uh, whatever the priest preach about. <laughs> there you go. And, and else uh, will, you know, becomes a, a preacher. Yeah, it's like, oh, that'd be cool. Batman preacher. Um, <laughs> uh, it's... Yeah, but like his... <laughs> you can't because... Anyway, he didn't turn to Christianity and it's right in front of him. You know, yeah. is there a reason why he's obviously ignoring it? Uh, in my opinion, don't even have a funeral, like a, a, a Catholic or whatever religious based funeral on this thing. Mm. I don't know. Uh, Dawn of Justice even had one where they were in a graveyard. They had a Catholic funeral for Clark, but I don't know. Batman, like if there's like weird gothic uh you know, things going on with Batman where obviously you have to bring in uh, Catholicism and, like, those types of things, like that imagery. But I don't necessarily think that priest characters and pastors and stuff like that should be in Batman, Mm. uh, especially not, like, as, like, a supporting just figure thing, just being there. Because then you're just, like, saying this character is just blatantly ignoring, uh, (laughs) like, the light, obviously, and going into the darkness. Which, yes, that's what Batman is, but at the end of the day, that is saying that your hero character is being the bad guy and not being a hero. (laughs) Yeah. Obviously, Batman has all these problems, but particularly, come on, Christianity is right in front of you and you're turning it away, like, that's the story that you're trying to portray in a Batman tale right now? The only thing I I can think in its defense uh, is, like, you'd need a line explaining this, but he could maybe be turning his back on it because he, 
you know, his parents have been murdered. So maybe he's like, oh, this is all fake. I don't believe in mm. this. Like, who would let I, this yeah, happen? Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's something that, like, I, as a person, could relate to. Me, mm, Nathan. Yeah. Like, that. that is like, oh, yeah, no, I get that. That's fine. If you have a line like that, or if you have just like, you know, a little kid scoffing at a priest, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I get, get it. it. Yeah. <laughs> then it's like, okay, yeah. that's where the descent comes from. You're a crazy person. I got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have, like, same thing with, uh, I mean, it kind of happened with my family uh, when my sister passed away, but it was kind of like that. You just kind of turn your back on that stuff because, again, it, if things made sense, then that this wouldn't yeah. have happened. But things don't mm. make sense. Yeah. Um. So like none of this matters. And also, it's like Christianity, like this funeral, and like the words of this priest. It's not immediate to his parents' death because like what's most immediate is that you have to wait in this alley for cops to show up with your dead parents, and you just saw like uh, you just saw this, and you had to like sit yeah. there for a bit, and it's like. And who knows what's going through the kid's head as he waits yeah. there, and and like it's like they're just like, all right, now pick up the dead bodies and like we gotta go take them to the mortuary. And it's like that's what the kid is dealing with for hours before he even gets to this point. This is like maybe a week mm-hmm. later. True. So it's also this like the idea too that he's just not he is just not paying attention to the priest. Like that could be just like the. That's that's why we're having difficulty even hearing what he's saying. So it's like, well, Bruce wasn't. Mm-hmm. This is his memory. He does. He wasn't. He was completely in his own world at that moment. Like he was. Yeah. Just, this guy could have been showing him entirely the way to go, but he was just like, no, I'm just focused on yeah. the, the, the Which is, and stuff. Yeah, I think that's what I thought of first, and then it very quickly turned into like questioning why even have a religious mm. aspect into it but like yeah I, i'm pretty sure i was thinking like okay yeah he's walking down like past his parents and then it was right after the priest stops talking um and you guys were talking about it before like you can't hear it and i think that's you know obviously uh if he wasn't paying attention to it and you know he turns his back on it obviously you can't hear it and stuff like that so yeah. It's, it's solid. Um, it's just one thing that you got to point out with the character of Batman is that he does turn his back on, you know, essentially good moral type uh, things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, that's yeah. just thing, though. Like, it's like, oh, we don't want to have a priest in there. But, like, I guess Alfred had to give them the funeral. So it's like, he's just swanning about, like, I have to do everything around here. Yeah. <laughs> Dig in the grave himself. Oh, like, God, that would have been funny. He makes him do everything. Michael Goth stand there with like a big mustache and like seventies mutton chops and stuff. <laughs> they think, oh, this was back in the day. <laughs> like smoking a cigarette, like leaning on the shovel, and just like uh, <laughs> yes. ro- uh, our sleeves rolled up, and like Bruce is just like sitting in, in, in the corner, and he's just like, come on, kid, Jeez. <laughs> like get over it. I fought in a war. <laughs> I am on board for this. <laughs> <laughs> just angry Alfred. That's what we need. Just like uh, pissed off. Just doesn't give a crap alfred <laughs> <laughs> but uh but of course then we do have bruce uh walking towards uh a certain something a certain something that's like kind of important in the finished movie but within the deleted scenes and whatnot is like one of the biggest elements of the whole thing the mm-hmm. whole thing that all the stuff that cut out was kind of intrinsically centered around the red book which is why you have the red book cut and whatnot. Are you guys? Are you particularly familiar with the red, like the, the stuff they cut out of Batman Forever, and uh, why this book no. was originally important and stuff? N- no, not at all. I haven't seen Batman Forever uh, in a in a hot minute. Um, in forever. Uh, yeah, in, in in quite literally forever. Uh, no, so I didn't know. I mean, I had it on VHS, so it was like one of those things that I just got watched, you know, as a kid. Batman Forever, awesome, cool, Michael Keaton. Um, and then, you know, you kind of, I never really went into like DVD extras or like any cuts and stuff like that. That's what mm. you guys are here for. You know, you, yeah, it's, it, it, what do you think? What do you think? I'm going to do your job for you? No. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> but you should, yeah, you should know then it was like 40 minutes of this movie were cut out. Uh, and a lot of it was based around like fleshing out all, all the Bruce Wayne uh, repressed memories. Stuff. I want the Schumacher cut. The things they should have, like yeah, the Schumacher cut, essentially, like, <laughs> really and you can Schumacher get the version cut. of it. Like, yeah. you get people who have apparently there is this red book edition where someone has placed all the scenes back in in order and whatnot. So you would have began with friggin' Two Face breaking out of Arkham and all that kind of stuff. But um, 
But yeah, we'll you know, we'll obviously talk about it, like because it's not within this scene that they go into exactly what the red book is. We'll talk about it more in depth later. But yeah, I think that's a, I'm kind of done for this minute. If you guys are, I don't know if you anything else you want to bring up. No, yeah, I there's a lot I would like. I'm saving for tomorrow's uh-huh. minute. So, but yeah, good good uh, leave mm-hmm. off there. <laughs> uh, you, John, anything else you want to get into? No, I'm uh, I'm waiting for your weekly riddle. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. Uh, this season, guys, uh, we do have a thing that I like to do and I frequently forget to do. And then John has to remind me <laughs> to do it just like he did there now. We like to do a riddle because the Riddler's in this movie. Uh, so I, I will pose a riddle to you and see if you can get it. And if you can't, on Friday, I'll reveal the answer and people can speculate on the listener's cave all week as to what the, the riddle actually is. Um, but anyway, so riddle me this. I have cities, but no houses. I have mountains, but no trees. I have water, but no fish. What am I? Uh, um, are we? Are we supposed to think about it or answer it right now? If you know the answer right now, I will go ahead and say. Oh no! You can speculate, or you can ponder it for the rest of the week. I'm gonna ponder it. That's a tough I'll, one. Po- I'll ponder, ponder it. it. <laughs> well, of course, yeah. people know then if you do know the answer. And again, don't just look it up. Don't just Google it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Play the game. Yeah. But, uh, and yeah, so just yeah, feel free to type away in the uh, in the listener's cave. At this point now, we have, we're have we past the point of like, we're just in pre-production. We're, we're just recording and episodes weren't airing. But now episodes have gone out. I've seen the people have actually engaged with that as well. Because at the time, I was thinking like, people might not want to do this at all. But some people have been like, yeah, they type in every after the episode going like, oh, I think it might be this and all this kind of thing. So yeah. hopefully that keeps up. And I, I'll be pondering it as well. And we'll, we'll try and come up with it by Friday. But uh, would uh, our wonderful guests like to tell people where they can find them online and their shows and whatnot? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Nate and I do two three how many podcasts do we oh. do Nate? anyways we do we have dc cinematic minute where we're talking about uh what we've covered man of steel dawn of justice suicide squad and now we'll be covering and releasing episodes for wonder hey. woman a minute and then we also do another dc related podcast called doom patrol radio where nathan and i talk about all the episodes of the tv show doom yeah. patrol um and you can find that at doom oh, patrol great, radio great yeah. show like both of the podcast and Doom Patrol um, in itself. Absolutely fantastic. Amazing show. show. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, check that out, everybody. And come and speak to us on Facebook at the Batman at Listener's Cave. You probably know that by now. And come come check out our Patreon and you can get lots of wonderful content like us talking about Aladdin and cats and <laughs> all kinds of strange <laughs> things. Uh, that, that cats. Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah. But yes, do check that out and get more episodes. And we will see you again on Wednesday for more Batman at Forever. Next time, Daydream Believer. Wayne awakens from a memory lane trip and mutters his way through a murderous Freudian slip. But as repressed remorse and an honest become obvious, which familiar Dark Knight flashlight will flicker into life? Find out Wednesday, same bat pod, different bat minutes. Ba-da-da, ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da